well, another spooky season has sadly come and gone. But not for me. Not in this household. In here, Halloween and terrible horror movies are something we practice year-round like our lives depend on it. And maybe they do. Halloween is cool, nature boy. So what better way to terrify yourself than trying out some infrared film for the first time in many years? I shot infrared back in high school for an assignment, but those recipes aren't around anymore, unfortunately. There are a few different options or infrared-like stocks out there today, but most people seem to turn towards Rolly Infrared 400. And with an upcoming cemetery walk with the gang over at Tuttle's camera in Long Beach, I felt like this might be the perfect place for an attempt. I've had this film sitting around for almost six months at this point in my fridge, so I was excited to finally start cracking away some frames. I just hoped I wouldn't mess it up too badly. Oh. A couple things to note, if you yourself decide to shoot infrared film, you'll need an R72 filter to capture infrared light. Or you can always use a red filter paired with a polarizer. Otherwise, when you shoot Rolly, your images will just resemble a very flat black and white film. When it comes to exposure using a filter like this, you'll need to take into account how dark and resilient this addition is to your lens. Just try looking through this. You can't. Maybe you have better eyesight than me, but this filter is like taking a cell phone picture through those solar eclipse glasses. Wait, I'm getting ahead of myself. So to counter this lack of light easily passing through your film, I've seen online people recommend overexposing your film by four to six stops over. If the light meter in your camera works and is calculated through the lens, not an outside sensor of the body, you'll actually be able to meter correctly. But unfortunately for me, the light meter in my F2 hasn't worked for some time. So I've been using an outside light meter and factoring the rule of four to six stops over. For me, I found my results worked best in six stops over, but that could be because of the cheaper filter I'm using. So if you feel like it, maybe bracket a few shots. Focus is also something to keep in mind, as it can be as tricky as convincing your girlfriend to watch Terrifier 2 before 10 in the morning, but it's pretty simple once you figure it out. One way I wanted to counter this focus issue was shooting at high f-stops, mostly around f8 or f11. I've seen a fair amount of people online recommend always shooting at f16, but I kind of have a hard time listening to rules. You'll want to set up your shot and focus first without the filter, and I also used a tripod to help keep my framing consistent. And then once you're happy with the composition, put your R72 back on and slide your focus slightly to line up with the red dot on the top of your lens. Most lenses of this era will have this little symbol indicator to help understand where your focus should be when regarding infrared light. Otherwise, your pictures may be a little out of focus. Is it tedious? Absolutely. A much more professional photographer might have had a filter mount that allows you to flip up and down the R72 on a hinge. But what I did was screw it on and off every single time I wanted to take a picture. So I guess the lesson here is always have a cleaning cloth with you if you're going to do it this way. I wanted to take a few images the day before, not so much as a test for this method, but more a practice of workflow and getting used to this slower process. Plus, I didn't want to look like an idiot in front of Alex. Not again. We're never talking about this. Like I said before, I had my best luck when exposing six stops over exposed to what my light meter was reading. Four stops over just didn't allow enough light in with this filter. But today it was also late afternoon for these first few images. So I'd recommend shooting in bright midday sun, or at least being a better photographer. Before the event, the next morning, like I already spoiled, was a community meetup to witness the 2023 solar eclipse. Tuttle was hosting this event and even provided many of us enthusiasts with lenses fitted with the proper filters and long enough to actually capture this event. It was honestly great because not many of us own lenses that can snipe farther than Jude Law in Enemy at the Gates. I brought my X-T5 to capture a bit of the action here on the ground. And I really love these pictures. Here in California, we didn't experience total coverage, but there's still something really wholesome about a bunch of humans watching one event together 
and feeling that connected existence of nothing really matters but the moments we make. Later that afternoon, I met up with Alex and Scoops before the cemetery walk and enlisted the help of a local coffee shop to set the scene and allow us to get into character. Because nothing says spooky season like a bunch of chocolate chip cookies garnishing your adult beverage. Believe it or not, there's coffee in there. Sponsored by Rat Coffee. Get your rat on. We met up with the group and started cracking away. Having the tripod really slowed down my ability to capture what I wanted in comparison to most people walking around with ease. I was even slower than Alex in his medium format. We love the camera on the ground. But despite it being so sunny, we're only working with infrared light, and I'd hate for my framing and composition to suffer in pursuit of what might be easier. The shoe went really well. Not every shot came out as I envisioned it. This one had album cover potential. But my choice in only overexposing four stops resulted in a slightly underexposed look that doesn't really have much of an infrared look at all in my opinion. But this wasn't always the case. I think another factor was the direction chosen. Shooting into the sun seemed to result in a less than ideal effect, while shooting into the cast of the light, I mean just look at this. The way the sky has burned into a deep black and the foliage has been stripped away of almost any shadows to this white snow-like texture, it's just, I don't know, it's fun. As a side note, when operating in a delicate environment like this, take into account a level of respect when navigating something that others find sacred. Our film walk had been sponsored and approved by the Historical Society of Long Beach, but that doesn't mean we didn't try our best to follow common sense etiquette. These were people's final resting places, and the last thing we needed was to take advantage of that for the sole benefit of a picture. After about an hour of lugging my tripod around in such a secluded area, I do think my framing and composition lacked overall near the end. But I look at this exercise as a test, and I feel really confident in choosing potential subjects that best lend themselves to this look in the future. Oh, did you almost forget to? I almost just opened oh it. Oh my of wire. god, Will. Oh, no, that's good. The fact that I almost just opened it. But even though the shoot was over, we hadn't had our fill of ghosts quite yet, so we turned to the scariest place on earth Burger King, or as Alex likes to call it, his second home. And I wanted to try out that neon ghost pepper burger thing. And after I ate it, I only saw infrared light for weeks. It's good? Spicy? It's just like a sauce on there that's spicy. Oh. <laughs> Where's like the lettuce? <laughs> there's no, there's no veggies Oh, in it there. just went in my nose. Oh no. I'd like to thank everyone from Tuttle's Cameras for sponsoring these awesome local events and for also providing me with a test roll that we'll be taking advantage of very soon. Mm -hmm.